What up, G Life? It's your boy MC Shadow back at you with another video. Finally, off of the suspension, you know what I mean? Don't forget to like, subscribe. It's absolutely free. You'll help my channel get into the algorithm. I would highly appreciate if you go ahead and do that, right? It's absolutely free, bro. You know you can't drink no free stuff. Don't forget to check out my second channel, Man of Society, MOD, where we talk about stuff outside of the streets and street stuff. <laughs> anyway, one of the topics I wanted to talk about was that people ask is the gangster dress code, right? Is one of the biggest misconceptions when it comes to the lifestyle in general, right? So one thing I have learned is that a lot of people just thought that they knew about, you know, the street light, but, you know, they just really didn't know because obviously if you're not a part of it, you know, you can only assume and assumptions are never facts, right? First is a gangster doesn't have a way of dressing, right? Now, what you label as gangster is different, right? Even if you're talking about Hispanic, because there is multiple Hispanic uh, gang elements out there, right? It's just not Southerners. You know, you have Northerners, you have Folk Nation, People Nation, you have Tejanos, you know, you have people from Arizona, from, you know, different areas that associate themselves with Hispanic gangs, but are not Southerners or Northerners, right? They're from their area, whether it's Texas, Arizona, uh, you know, in other areas, right, where they're Hispanics gangs, but they're not you know, attached to Southern or Northern, right? Um, you know, depending, you know, from which state we're talking about, you know, stuff is run differently, right? Even though you do have Southerners and Northerners in other locations, right? There is other Hispanic elements there, right? Um, so, you know, it's not all the same when it comes to it because they're considered gangsters as well, right? And then you have black gangs, Asian gangs, and Russian gangs, and Israeli gangs, and stuff like that, right? So, when you try to say, you know, I think what they refer to more is the Southern gangster um, about their stilo, right? Right. I'm assuming is what they're talking about. Now, the Southerners never have a style, you know, to say, you know, that is their stilo, right? I have seen homies with long hair, short hair, fades, bald, tapers, um, you name it. I seen them. You know what I mean? They exist. From homies that are, you know, baggy clothes to homies that dress, you know, fitted to casual to skaterish to rocker to paisa to different forms of, of how they dress, right? You have them in every gang, right? Um, so to say that they there's a dress code is ridiculous. There is no dress code, right? Now, do a majority of homies dress a certain way? Yes. But to say that there is a dress code? No. Or a lingo or something like that? No. Um, it's like one of the misconceptions is that all Sudanos wear blue when that's not true. You know, you have homies that wear red. You have homies that use green. You have homies that use black. You have homies that use brown. You have homies that use burgundy. You have homies that use yellow. And a lot of barrios, you know, like green, you know, off the top, you know, you have, you know, wicked marijuanos, you have uh, marijuana locals, you have uh, Eastside Bolin, you have Gardenas, you have the Gardena Dog Towns. Um, you have so many different barrios of uh, Buena Park. You have so many different barrios that use green, right? And red, you know, Culver City, you have Eastside Longos, um, you have the Little Wads, you have the Brad. You have so many different barrios that use red. And then yellow, you have, you know, like Del Sol or black, like Santa Monica or brown you know, rags like, you know, like, uh, like the brown side locals or, or, uh, the brown prides, you know, Sureños or the brown crowds, you know, so you have different writers that use brown and et cetera. The list goes on and on and on. So not all just homies use blue, but a majority of homies use blue, right? So that's another misconception, right? That all homies use blue, right? When that's not true. Um, so these are all misconceptions or that we hate blacks when you see blacks, you know, a lot of black suiting. I uploaded a video that had more than 500 pictures in it, and all those pictures had at least one or two blacks in it. Do the math. More than 500 pictures, one or two more blacks, meaning that that's more than 500 black suenos. For a racist gang, that's a lot of people they're letting into their organizations. <laughs> I mean, there's the proof. <laughs> I don't make this stuff up. Anywho, but this is stuff that people just think that they know or thought that they knew or all the misconceptions that people use, right? Acting like they know about the life when they have absolutely no idea, bro. Um, right? So that's another one that people, you know, mislead, which is the dress code, right? But it's not that they do it for absolutely no reason, right? Everything has evolved through time, right? What How gang members look back then is not how they look now. And even, even they weren't always bald and baggy clothes because that's not true. You know what I mean? When the original, we talk about the original gangsters, how they originally were was not bald and was not with baggy clothes. The originals were not like that. So to say that that's the original stilo of a homeboy, it's false. Because that is not how these individuals originated as or how. 
right? Remember, Barrios came out of dirt poor areas. People didn't have much money. You didn't have the luxury of choosing your stilo back then. You were lucky with what you had. Because these Barrios came from dirt poor areas where people didn't have much. You know, you were lucky you had a pair of shoes. You know, and if your belt broke, you know, you grab trash bags or, or, or you know, uh, extension cord or whatever to, you know, or shoelaces. That was the way because y'all didn't have money. Facts, bro. You know what I mean? You know, same reason why they weren't short hair. You were lucky you had enough money for a haircut or to afford to have a haircut or a haircut machine. Anywho, right? So... This is stuff that has evolved as time has gone, right? Everything evolves, right? Um, how, you know, the originators, you know, how they originally were and how the music they heard, you know, from oldies to the slick back and the Stacys and the, you know, suspenders and the slacks and all that, you know, from the baggy clothes, Cortezes, to the flannels, to the Tupacs and Easy Ease, to all of that, to, you know, what we have in modern time, right? But stuff always evolves with time and one generation, you know, hates on the other or says how they, you know, switched up and blah, 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 blah. But this is something that evolves with time, right? Just like everything else, right? So to say that there's a way of dressing or that this is the original style is ridiculous. Maybe people see it like that because that's the era in which they grew up in. So that's the reason why they choose to see it that way. But that's their own ignorance, bias points of view. I could only look at the big picture and not just home in on to what I think or whatever, right? Just because I, you know, dress a certain way, right? Now pe people could be like, when are you going to change, whatever. But it's like, I'm not dressing like this because I want to look intimidating or look like a gangster. It's, this is who I am. This is how I like to dress. This is me. And not pretending, never was pretending. Now, that's not to say that people don't pretend, you know, because like everything, you know, you do have people that just try to, you know, fit in and play the part, right? But like with everything, you know, time ends up, you know, weeding all of that out, right? So, a gangster doesn't have what weight. The clothing, the lingo, the walk and all that, that doesn't make you a gang member. It's the mentality, right? The heart, and the balls. Is what homies look for and it's what, you know, separates you from the rest, right? You know, the way you you live right not how you look right but society likes to judge everything based off of looks right when that is it's one mistake that it does a lot you know over and over again with a lot of different things right um they go based on what they think something should look like instead of what something actually is right because like i said there's homies that look like skaters rockers paisas and all of that bro mixed in with all of the homies right um but yes, there is, you know, a reason for why, you know, clothing and all of that started changing or the reason why, you know, it's worn, right? Um, I know individuals just look at it like, I don't understand why they wear baggy clothes or I don't understand why, you know, this, this and that. Or, or the long sock one, that one was always, that was always a funny one, right? When people try to tell me. What they think is the reason why people wear long socks, right? Like to hide their tattoos. And I heard all kinds of crazy shit, right? And that that essentially came from homies that are incarcerated, right? It was a thing that they would do, you know, to stay warm, right? Because, you know, for those who know, you know, it gets mighty cold. It gets mighty hot and it gets mighty cold, right? Uh, freezing cold and shit, right? Some areas, right? So, yes, it was done, you know, keep warm. And then, like everything, it becomes a habit, right? Um, and it was also used to conceal um, contraband before, right? Uh, because when neighborhoods first started, the laws were completely different back then, right? For example, they weren't allowed to just stop and search you back then, right? But then, you know, they started putting all these new laws in, right, to help the law enforcement fight crime, right? Um, so with that came, you know, stop being able to stop and frisk individuals, right? Because before, uh, people seen it that it went against your, your amendment, right? So they implemented these new laws where they were able to stop and frisk you now, right? But they were not they were only able to stop and frisk you from the, not from the waist down, right? So, um, like, they were allowed to check your pockets, but not anywhere beneath that, right? So people would conceal blades and um, money and, you know, little sums of, of drugs as well, right? Um, so that's also why it was used, right? But those are the two main reasons, right? You know, homies, you know, that would get out of jail. It was just a habit. Little homies would see it. And um, 
you know, copy it, right? Um, and with baggy clothes, obviously before, like I said, you were able to be out there, you know, these individuals when gangs first started, you know, to defend themselves out because they were heavily outnumbered by the whites. Uh, you know, they would have bats and chains and crowbars and stuff like that, right? And nobody would tell them anything. Law enforcement wasn't allowed, like I said, to just stop and search them before, right? Um, but with new laws coming in, they weren't allowed to just be out there in the corners like that no more, right? Um, so they had to start concealing their weapons, right? So they started wearing bigger clothes to conceal their weapons, right? Um, is the reason why that was done, right? Because they, if they, if they seen the weapon, then they were able to, you know, harass you and stuff like that, right? But if they don't see no weapon, then they have no probable cause to, you know, search you, um, so these were all games. Like I said, it, stuff starts evolving just as the same as when law started changing. These individuals start adapting to the new ways, right? And implementing new tactics. It's a game of cat and mouse always, <laughs> right? Um, that's just the way it is. And that's why stuff always changes, right? Um, so, you know, to say it's a complete shock that individuals now look completely different. I mean, it's it's been the gangster way since as long as it's been here right now individuals like i said have a way of looking at it right because you know the thing was that this was our this was something that the raza the chicanos created right uh you know to it was our own you know steal our own slang our own lingo our own identity right because we weren't able to to we weren't able to um how can I say? We weren't able to identify with, like, Americans, right? Because Americans didn't see us as Americans, right? And people from the motherland, Mexicans, they didn't view us as real Mexicans, right? So we couldn't identify with American or Mexican. That's why, you know, they created, you know, the whole Chicano, you know, our style, right? Our identity, right? That's why people have a lot of pride in the Chicano estilo, right? Um, because it was an identity that we created for ourselves, right? And now individuals now just became like everybody else trying to do what everybody else does right because of social media and you know how the times work now with um you know everybody wanting to fit in and belong and not wanting to be clowned and and stuff like that right everybody wanted to be relevant and, and wanted to be a part of you know the trends um that you know these new behaviors start you know like i said um sprouting out right um but that's because it's a new era right things are done differently but it's not a complete shock, right? Because, like I said, even Stilos over here were um, influenced, right? One way or another uh, by something. Um, you know what I mean? Kind of like the slick back hair. You know, it's like, you know, why the editors now are popular, right? Um, that was like the thing to have back then and this is the thing to have now. So, you know, it's not so, you know, hard to see, you know, why. You get what I mean? Um... So it's not a complete shock, right? Because these individuals, like I said, the link, the way you talk, somebody could look, you know, with Ben Davis, Cortez and all that, but they could be a big ass weenie. You know, I've seen all kinds of people that are rankers and everything, like I said, because all of that doesn't mean shit. It's not going to make you a gangster. It's your heart and your mentality, bro. I've seen individuals that look like complete squares, right? Casual guys that, you know, and that are some real, real writers, you know? I've seen homies, you know, all tattooed everywhere that are weenies. And I've seen, you know, real as writers who have absolutely no tattoos whatsoever, bro. Because it's the mentality that makes you a G. What good is having a homie all banged out and looking gangster if when the enemies roll up, he's in a fold? Compared to this guy, may not look like a G, but once the enemies come through, he's going to handle business. Which homie are you going to prefer? Like I said, because the estilo does not mean anything. Homies want you to be you, not pretend to be something else, bro. In this life, people don't like pretenders. Um, right? So a homie will respect you more if you're just yourself. You know? And there's homies that are, like I said, um, you know, we're similar in some ways, but there's homies, you know, that like different stuff and... They're still homeboys, you know, just because they look like skaters rocking, you know, doesn't mean shit. You know, because I've seen homies like that, not just from my barrio, but from all kinds of barrios, you know? But people, sometimes when they see, they're like, this fool can't be a gangster, look how he looks. Like, if that's supposed to mean something. Like, oh, so you think it's a, it, it has to be an image and there's a dress code and stuff like that. Like, when you get jumped in, they give you a paper that has a dress code, you must have Cortez's and bed. <laughs> uh... And obviously, Cortez were the first running shoes, you know, used in the Olympics. You were running from the cops a lot. Obviously, you wanted some running shoes. So, my homies chose to do that and, you know, take his work. 
and all that were popular, you know, work clothing. You know, you had the Ben Davis, the counties and stuff like that, right? For the hard workers, people thought that they were putting in work, right? It's a running gag, right? They took and, you know, ran with it, right? And like I said, you were lucky just whatever you got, bro. You know, there were hand-me-downs, you know, sometimes, you know, you know, dad's work pants or whatever, you know what I mean? And it became a seal. Just like how people see all these nice lowrider cars, those back then used to be the pieces of shit. Those were the buckets back then. All those cars were the what people seen that the broke folks drove. There were the buckets, bro. Now, you know, they became rare and people started, you know, souping them up. That people now are, are attracted to these kind of vehicles, right? But before, those were seen as for the broke folks. I'm, I'm just keeping it real, right? Um, and... You know, you can look it up yourself. You could, you know, educate yourself on the thing, right? Um, talk to the OGs, right? Um, they could put you up on game. But like I said, bro, this lifestyle, yeah, it came from nothing, bro, because we had nothing before. You know? These individuals were just, you know, humble to have what they had, bro. And they made, you know, to best use what, what they had. But like I said, as time goes by, start things start evolving and changing. You know what I mean? You know, it's not it's not a big surprise, bro. So, you know, those are just some of the misconceptions of why individuals, you know, see things, you know, a certain way when it's not like that. You know, um, people just assume and have ran with these assumptions for so long that people, you know, attach it to it to be facts when it's not true, bro. Um, but that's what happens when you let the individuals who don't know, you know, run mucks. Like I said, I'm not here to convince you. You can believe what you want, you know. Um, but, yeah, what do you guys think? Leave your opinions in the comments. You know, were you aware of some of this stuff? You know, um, did you believe in some of this stuff? Like, you thought, like, it was a certain way or when you found out it was like, what? You know? Like, some people are so blown away that there's red ragging swinging riders when, oh, that must be a new thing. Like, no, bro, that shit has been happening since the, these neighborhoods started back then since in the 30s and 40s, bro, that they've been red raggers. It's not a new thing. <laughs> oh, it must be something new. Like, what the hell? But like I said, they ran, they run with the propaganda, bro. Oh, I seen it on Gangland. They said this. Like, what the hell are they going to know? <laughs> uh, you know? They get their information from people who have an agenda, who have some type of hatred towards these individuals, right? That's why individuals come on here and say all kinds of dumb stuff, you know, trying to make the life look bad. Like I said, you don't have to lie on the life in order, you know, to make it look in order for you to people to see that it's bad, it's a bad lifestyle overall. You get nothing out of it, bro. But when you start lying and people start now seeing the lies, then your credibility is hard for people why to trust you, bro. And that is the reason why these individuals, you know, why there's so much bickering back and forth, right? Uh, or why sayings like you get nothing out of it or you're gonna die in jail and people still join, right? And it's like, how come this is not working? That way, you need to stop running and you just, you know, tell it for what it is, how exactly for what it is. Because as soon as you lie and people find out that you're lying, they're going to question everything else you say. You know what I mean? But overall, you know, that's just, you know, some, you know, insight into the life shadow we are.